Yo, what is going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another episode of Sue Talks. We did one with Lucent Azure last week talking about Guild Wars, so I figured since we're already doing more of these uh, content things that I don't get to talk about normally, let's talk about all the PvE stuff that I don't normally get to talk about. And there's no better person to talk about PvE with than, uh, I guess you could say, the uh, the harbinger of the Metalocalypse himself, the PvE god, Mr. Tristan Wolf. How you doing, Tristan? Hey, Sue, what's up? I'm really glad you had me on here for this RTA discussion. I'm excited <laughs> to talk about the, the current meta and tactics from cleave to tank down. It's going to be awesome. Uh, all right. <laughs> you swell all I ever you. get to do is talk about PvE stuff, and it gets kind of old, so it's really nice that you invited me on here for some good old-fashioned RTA talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, he didn't get the memo. No, just <laughs> No, Tristan is absolutely the homie. I'm so thankful to have him on here. Obviously, you guys have to know who this man is. Like, if you're in the Epic Summit community, you don't know who he is. I feel like you're living under a rock because obviously, they, like I said, he's the PVE god, uh, and he's also super helpful for when you have problems at home. Thank you again, by the way. This man is the reason I'm able to do content this week. He saved me from a, a crisis at home. So, again, <laughs> thank you for that. But no, unfortunately, uh, really jokes worried. aside, no, we're still talking about PvE. You're, you're locked here oh, forever. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, you're here forever. So <laughs> the first thing I wanted to ask is, why PvE content for you? Because, like, I when I started making content, it's because I noticed there was a need in the community. I'm sure it might be the same for you. So I'll let you talk about your story about what made you want to be a PvE content person when everyone else in the community seems to be so dead set on things like RTA. Well, a couple of things. First, uh, I'm an old school gamer, right? I, I cut my teeth on JRPGs, ARPGs, even some MMOs. And, and to date, RPGs are still my favorite genre. Um, I, I like MMOs too, but I tend to lose myself in them. So trying to avoid temptation there. Yeah, that's me. But I, I, I always enjoyed solving the puzzles and figuring out the you know the optimal runs, the best way to do things. I like the sense of accomplishment from from achieving goals. I also started playing Epic Seven in 2018, and RTA didn't exist. The closest thing to PvP we had was was Banner Arena, and uh, and you know before Epic Seven, I was playing uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Oh, okay, and. and it was a big jump going from FFBE to Epic Seven, right? Because I, I was starting to pick up traction in that community. I was writing lots of guides there. I, I was the guy that people came to and they're like, this content's impossible. And that would challenge me to find ways to make the impossible possible. And, you know, when I came to Epic Seven, you know, I, I had nothing. It was a brand new uh, world for me, which, you know, it was, was kind of nice for a break, but at the same time, I, I, I didn't have much to do, so I just immersed myself in the story, and I, I joined right during Eulogy for a Saint, Ooh, which to date, I good still time. say is, I still say that's the best story Epic Seven's ever written. It was, yeah. it was well done, it was immersive, it was, uh, you know, it was gut-wrenching at points. If you haven't watched Eulogy for a Saint, you, you should drop the Sky Stones to watch that, it's worth it, or, or pick, watch it on YouTube, or it's free. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> After I after I got through that story, I was like, damn, damn, I'm digging this game. So I, I dove into all the lore and I got really engaged with the background of Epic Seven. Like everything from the Celestial War to eventually why the hell are the robots in my yeah. anime dragon game. And, uh, <laughs> no. With each new PvE content that came out, you know, story, event, collab, more lore came out. And and that gave me a level of interest and engagement in the PvE of the game. But what I think really started me doing the content is kind of funny. Uh, like I said, I used to play FFBE, and all of us, when, when, when Brave Exvia started circling the drain, all of us jumped ship at once and came to Epic Seven. Mm -hmm. Some faster than others, right? Some, some were playing both games. Some were playing casually. I kind of just cold turkey quit Brave Exvia. Um, about 25 of us came over. And in fact, we named our guild Epic Brave because some of us were playing Epic Seven and some of us were playing Brave Exvius. Ah. And, um, you know, since I was heavy playing Epic Seven, some of the casuals, they would always come to me like, hey, how do I beat this content? How do I do this content? And I, I would get asked the same question over and over and over again. And it drove me nuts. So I just started recording myself playing. 
And then whenever somebody would ask me for something, I would upload that clip of the record to YouTube, to a private channel and say, there, go watch. And it wasn't even really guides. It was just, you know, watch me play this content and figure it out for yourself and stop asking me the same damn question. <laughs> it, it was to the point where I started doing that for Guild Wars when those were introduced. Yeah. Like, How do I beat this team? This, this sounds like, exactly just, like just... Lucent, by the way. Lucent yeah. had the same thing. He was just like, I just got tired of my guildmates asking me to how right? to do. It was just like, just, oh, just yeah. watch this. Just, just watch this. I don't want to be uh, bothered with it. So, so, yeah, it, it's funny how a little private YouTube channel kind of became my content creation for this game. It was mostly just because I got really annoyed at my guildmates and they yeah. forced me into content creating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was doing PVE content for like a business office because I noticed that people like um, level up together. Water, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So content creators like level up together and like Sky King, like those are the content creators of like yesteryear, the people who like paved the way for a lot of us. Um, and they just didn't do content anymore. And then when we had challenge abyss, I was like, yeah, I could do that. Like it, it, how, how hard could it be? I've solved everything in PVE up until this point, uh, yeah. except the dagger Sakar stuff, which by the way, that's how I figured out about your content. Uh, a <laughs> good friend of mine, Welchy was like, Oh yeah. Are you going to go for the dagger Sakar stuff? And we kept trying it. We couldn't figure it out. And for a lot of stuff, I used Cirilla. For like everything to do it. But the stuff I couldn't get. He was like oh have you seen this guy Tristan Wolf. Who uses uh, uh what's his name as his avatar. Uh, Wild Angara. Because up until then Welchy uh, was like the only person I knew. That used Wild Angara. He was like yeah you gotta watch this guy. uses Wild Angara for his stuff. Um, so that's like. Shogun how... was using it too yeah. Yeah that's right I forgot Shogun did it too. But yeah that's how I kind of like. Fell into the groove of like. Not only myself starting PB. But like becoming acquainted with your stuff. And it got to the point where I'm like. Yeah, no, th this guy just, like, aside from Abyss, like, this guy has just got it covered for, like, every single scenario. So, so, so why Cirilla? What 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 about Cirilla drew you? Were there any reason or reasons that oh, you were drawn to Cirilla? Big, big damage, big personalities. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> no, but, like, uh, Sermia, like, was obviously, that's my favorite now, but, like, I never even considered really using Sermia. I thought, like, Sermia was, like, a meme unit. It wasn't until yeah, I saw Sermia. you with... Yeah, Sermia with the exclusive equipment is like otherworldly when it comes to PvE stuff. Like you got your videos were definitely what turned me on to that. But it's funny how I never made that connection, by the way, because Cirilla, I would use the exclusive equipment where you use the S2 to get the extra turn. And that's mm -hmm. what made me think like, oh, Cirilla just has insane damage. She has all of the debuffs. Cause back then, it's not so much anymore with Hall Trials, but you remember it'd be like Oh, you need to use like a mage and have a burn debuff. And it was like, if you named a debuff, like Cirilla probably had it. So that was yep. kind of what it was. It was like, I'm just trying to high roll with a character that has good damage, uh, synergizes with the rage set and gets extra turns randomly. That's kind of, kind of it. So speaking of Hall of Trials, that's not necessarily like your favorite PV content, is it? Because if it's not... Tell me what your favorite thing actually is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I can't imagine it is. I like the challenge of solving it, and I also like that it's every two weeks and not every week. Oh, my God. When it was every week, I was like, please. Like, well, it used to have the, the trial week where there was a whole week, week where there was nothing going on. Oh, the dead week. God. The yeah. dead week sucked. It was like, you know it's coming, and then just nothing would happen. It's like, oh, yeah, next week is Archdemon. You just have to sit there and look at it, and you read the stuff, and I, I have... Correct me if I'm wrong, but like you couldn't even test it originally. Did they eventually add a prep, or was that always there? It's been so long, I can't remember. They they added the prep week, and you could go in and do it and test it and get your team ready, but it didn't count. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what's worse than going, boom, I got Dagger Sakar. Now I've got the team made for it. Okay, I guess I'll put this gear back and then pay to re-gear it during the actual week and then hope I don't get posed by RNG and see if it works again. Nobody <laughs> did it. It, it was it was a dead week, literally, because nobody ever did it. And it, it's not like there's some kind of contest for having your Hall of Trials video up first. It's not content that that creators are climbing all over themselves to get out there immediately. So it's, yeah, um, yeah I'm really glad they changed that. <laughs> but yeah, my favorite PvE content is the non-repetitive kind. Oh, okay. Like, so, like I really like Ancient Inheritance because, you know, it's dynamic it, you jump into voice, be part of planning. It, it, it's a changing event. It's never quite the same. It's always a little different. Always requires some strategy and some co-op. I love Brawl for the same reason. It, it was challenging. It had, you know, it was challenging. It was different. It, ha it had a great background story to it. 
Yeah. My least favorite is just the slow, repetitive kind. I mean, yeah. expeditions, right? Yeah. yeah. Nagi really needs us to give background battles for expeditions. I, maybe not like repeating ones, but at least just be able to tap out of that and let it run in the background until it's over. So you could do something other than staring at the same fight over and over yeah. and over again. I, I definitely so. feel that. I like right now, I haven't finished Expos for this month. And that's the thing that's killing me right now is like, I'm trying to do a lot of different things. Like I have my, you know, I'm doing E7, my work, and then content all like simultaneously. And it's like, oh man, why can't I tap out of this? It's making it harder to multitask. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I, I, I agree with you, like uh, with, with the dynamicness. Cause like the stuff that's like repetitive or just like has insane difficulty spikes, like Abyss of Old. I really hate it because mm -hmm. it's just a bunch of RNG uh, stuff. And then, like, Advent. I'm not a huge fan on of Advent because Advent just feels like beating your head against the wall until you find one solution. And then it's just like, all right, cool, I just hit auto. So, yeah, I, I definitely think I agree with you. Um, Ancient Inheritance is definitely one where I'm personally not very strong at, but I recognize that it's, like, probably the most exciting form of PvE content. And it kind of sucks that it's, like, what, like three times a year? I wish it was a little bit more often, but I don't know if, it, uh, if, if the game could support it. Yeah. It's four times a year. It's every three months on the nose. Every like, Plus or minus one week. It's always been every three months on, on the nose. So we're due, due for it again here in the next uh, two to three weeks. Yeah, like right before be the American Thanksgiving. I, think I, I suspect it'll be announced right after the, the week after anniversary is when I think it's going to be announced. But anniversary may bump it a week or so. But anyway, it's around the corner. AI is one of those things that it's it's really dependent on your guild right if you have an yes. active guild with an active discord and people like jumping in voice chat it's a riot it's like the difference between doing uh um rta by yourself and doing rta in a chat room with a bunch of people like screaming and yelling at you and <laughs> one's fun one's a party one you never get tilted at because when bad rng happens your friends are laughing at you and you, you know you're but you do it alone man you just get angrier and angrier and you hate it and then you throw your phone against the wall ah uh. AI is kind of like that, it, less with the tilting, but more with if there's people there, it's a party. You, you're all like recommending each other. Do I get this chest or not? You know, it, 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 it's a fun group effort. Divine, it's pronounced the. Uh, Never punished, right? Hey. It's pronounced the Volcanica Viper. <laughs> Volcanica Viper! Volcanica Viper! Volcanica Viper! Volcanica Viper! <laughs> Okay, so moving on. Uh, so this is, I guess, more of like a content creation question because I, I, I'm mm -hmm. pretty big on the teach a man to fish philosophy. So like for me, I don't like just giving you the solution or just like making a clickbait video, as I'm sure you, some of you may have noticed, where I just like, oh, here's the thing. Like I want to try to teach you the methodology or the reasons why things work because... At the end of the day, if I just give you the solution, you don't learn anything. So for me, I sometimes will watch your stuff and I'm just like, this is great. I know the solution. But like, I also would just be like, damn, how, how does Tristan approach this situation? How does he come up with the solution? So what I'm trying to ask basically is like, what is like your decision tree? Like when you see a new piece of content, how does Tristan Wolf approach it rather than, you know, the route that I think some people do, which is. You know, hopefully Tristan's got the video in the next like two days or something. <laughs> well, I know you don't like clickbait, so I'll try to break it down. I'll I'll try to let you in on the secret tech, right? This this is the stuff that other content creators don't want you to know about. This this, this will change everything for you. <laughs> Was that too clickbaity? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, for real. I, 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 I take the, the Dragon Ball Z Saiyan approach. Oh, you just you just go if it beats you, you just come back stronger? I dive into the content, I let the content kick my ass several times, and then I get stronger from it, right? Uh, E7 loves writing novels with their content, right? <laughs> yes. it, unless, so unless you want to read this novel, it, it's difficult to... Uh, even if you do read the novel, you're going to absorb it all. Some of that, that stuff is fluff, <laughs> and some of it is critically important. So I go in, I get pulverized because Epic Seven's great in that they don't penalize you for trying, except for Rift, and we can rant about that later. But they don't <laughs> penalize you for trying. So go in, take a few hits, and then go, huh, 
I'm always dying at this point. So I start skimming through the novel and look for the mechanic that's killing me. And then I figure out how to accomplish that and just lather, rinse, repeat until I've developed a team. It, 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 it seems slow, and, and frankly, it is. It's slow as, slow as hell. But uh, the, the process educates me on the fight. Um, it educates me enough that I can see pitfalls, and more importantly, I can advise alternate teams, tactics, and artifacts. Because people don't want guides written around my team. People want guides written around their units. Yeah. They don't want to hear, use the units I don't have to accomplish this. So, uh, God forbid I use a limited artifact in a... In a uh, in a guide, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel that, fly. man. That's literally how I do it. And sometimes I can't get past it, right? I, I'm, I'm getting pulverized and I can't, um, I can't figure out um, how to get past the point. And I, uh, I, I got a handful of people that are, you know, really good at breaking things down that, mm -hmm. that I reach out to and, and, and I'll bounce ideas off of them. And sometimes we brainstorm and solve it that way. But Epic Seven's a pretty, uh, repetitive game when it comes to pve content usually what works in one form of pve works in the other and it's just overcoming certain things being restricted certain things getting you killed and uh elemental differences mm -hmm. but the the fundamentals are basically the same so you can yeah take a take a basic team and modify it and run it but yeah that's that's really it i just i just jump in both feet play for about an hour and if it's not working then i read the instructions <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i can relate to some of that so when i did like the challenge abyss content like what you said about people want their team to be the thing like you want to basically like, give them the solution with stuff that they probably have without using specific ml5 specific limited so on and so forth because i remember when i first started doing the challenge abyss series like i think i used biking in one of the videos i got roasted for it like, even though biking was, like, such an easy solution. Right. Everybody I, had her. Yeah. yeah, it was, like, odd. But for, like, the, you know, the three or four people that didn't have it, it was, like, pretty bad. So, I've had to get into the the swing of, like, don't, like starting my videos with don't click off the video if you don't have X thing. Because, like, that's the only way you're going to keep some people sometimes. And that's uh, that's a little bit frustrating, I, I, I guess. But, like, I understand where they're coming from. Because, like, people want the solution... With, but again, like it's got to be broadly accessible. So I guess that that's like the, the challenge of yeah. making content for Epic Seven. But uh, yeah, no, I think we have the also a similar approach. I guess then I thought there was like some secret sauce, but for me, I just uh, I read everything, try to figure out what the they want me to do. What is the general strategy, and then I think about like so if I if it's like oh they want me to play red units and like I need like for example Rift, it's like I need to overload it with debuffs or I need a defense break. It's just one of the best quality of life features they they added was the ability to search by debuffs. So it's just, I search by color, by debuff, and I just go, here's my short list of characters. And I just kind of pick the ones that I already have geared, see if it works, if it fails, uh, rinse, repeat. So like I guess I'd... Well, cool, the, cool, cool that the I'm trial and error lets you discover things. Smogate's really, really bad about giving you a novel about the uh, about the event and then not telling you the other half of the story. Right. Ah. Uh, for, I, I, I used to read everything and I and here's an example of why I changed. Right. I read everything about Vera, Nightmare Vera, so I can make my video. Yes. And uh, the first thing I noticed is she's not immune to uh, CR reduction. So I stuck a uh, fire. Um, what's her name? A uh, fire Lydica Here's on the Lydica. team. And every time that stupid uh, worm got ready to take a turn, throw her to the back of the line. It was working great until I got to stage two on stage two. She's magically immune to CR reduction. And it says it nowhere. You have to get to stage two and click on the skills to see all of the new changes. <laughs> that would you, that'd you, be you, tilting. Yeah, you do Hall of Trials versus uh, I think it's Xeno. It's either Xeno or Nilgal. It's one of the two, but it's in nowhere on any of the descriptions. It's a hidden passive, but on one of the skills hidden at the bottom of one of the random attack skills, it says if Nilgal has two or fewer debuffs, he gets thirty percent damage reduction. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's either Nilgal or Zeno. Honestly, I can't remember. It's all blurs together, but I, I always check. I always have to jump in the fight and click on all the skills to see if there's some stupid hidden mechanic like that. Because like thirty percent damage mit is huge when you're trying to rack up a ten million score. Yes, that's. Uh, I could definitely see how that could be kind of uh, obnoxious yeah. for the. So you know, there, there's 
Smallgate loves putting hidden passives, hidden skills, changing things up. You know, Daydream Joker um, works on Vera in the last phase, but doesn't work on the middle or first phase. And it works on the uh, cocoons, but it doesn't work on the worms once they hatch from the cocoons. I mean, there's all kinds of ridiculous little passives that are mentioned nowhere. You just got to discover them and find them. Oh, so, that's that's yeah, really it's... frustrating because like you can't really <laughs> read the skills of the lesser mobs, like the non-boss monsters, unless you do it yeah, before you're... you enter the level. Like yeah, you have to right, do it from but... the menu. Like that's that's actually. Mm. And when they get whole new skill sets at transition phases, you can't read the skills at the start either. You've got to grind through it to get to that stage. Then you can read the skills. So yeah, it's it's one of the more frustrating things about Epic Seven. It's like they have a, you know. Okay, I I did the first half of Vera. Here, here you do the second half. I'm going on break. <laughs> it's like different people. You know, what? On. it's funny you say that because like that's probably realistically like how programming is done. There's probably teams, um, and like members within teams that design things. So it's like for the total like as a uh, Macalis like raid, there's probably like five groups, one for each encounter, and it's just like. You know, there's probably a couple of people that work on Vera and it's like one person does one phase, one person does the other phase, so on and so forth. That's that's realistically that's a that's a very real thing that could have happened. So uh, I remember my first uh first time fighting in complete fastest in Hall of Trials and I kept losing and I I, I started raging about it and I and Rarbusto is in chat and I I yell at him I was like like I'm doing really good, racking up great damage, and then then suddenly he one shots me and he goes well, you, you know you can't dual attack him too much, right? I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, it, it's right in the instructions on his skill tree. You read that, right? I'm like, no. No. <laughs> 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 okay, so we were talking about brute forcing stuff. Uh, what would you recommend as a couple of uh, units for everyone who's like a newer or intermediate player have actually geared to kind of try to clear or tackle stuff in pv like what do you think are the greatest hits aside from the obvious freebies of sermia vivian and sagrat because everybody gets those at this point post uh, awaken update from what the 2022 i think since then they've, they've been free for everybody i know it's easier said than done but if given the opportunity everybody needs to lay their hands on the holy trinity right mm -hmm. um conqueror lilius mediator choiric specter tenebria they're they're gotcha. probably the most important ML fives in the game for both RTA and PVE. Okay. Um, they're all they're all workhorses in all content from from Guild Wars to Arena to Advent to AI everything. They're used everywhere and they're so good that hell I, I built two of almost all of them. They're so good. Everybody we should get them and you know they're the kind of unit that if you pull a dupe you're even not mad about it. Mm. But uh, aside from ML fives. Um, yeah, because we'll get roasted in the comments if it's like, oh, yeah, Tristan, yeah, yeah. Tristan just advocates the three best characters in the game. Hey, you said who everybody <laughs> should get. I'm like, if you have the capability, <laughs> these these are get before anything else. You don't save to see who the next ML is. You grab Lilius, you grab Handgun. Yeah. Right? But um, yeah, I, I would take any of those three over ML Landy, as good as she is. It's just, they're powerhouse units. But uh, um. Smilegate is um, made a system of combat that is really, really vulnerable to dual attacks. Uh, I think dual attackers for um, for PVE dual attackers are probably the most important thing to get in the game. So, um, I was who we got? Like, uh, like Kitty Sinful Clarissa. Angelica. You got Adventurer Ross. You got uh, Kitty Clarissa, Camilla, Command Model Laika. Heck, even Fire Lilius. Anybody that can bang out dual attacks is giga important in this game. It, it, it's such a overblown skill in PvE that Smogate's starting to write content against it, right? Like Incomplete Fastus, who blows you up if you dual attack too much. And, and yeah. in, in Rift, they just straight up said, you can't. none of that noise is turned off. Yeah, because so they, they know... It, even it, they're acknowledging how overpowered it is. Yeah, because mo most of the, the Abyss stuff, from post-Abyss 100 onwards, and then also, like... Almost all twenty floors of challenge bitch at this point. Roz kind of trivializes it with Terran Regard. Like like Kitty Clarissa plus Terran Regard plus Roz is like you know, that's like the holy trinity of like regular abyss, man. It just kind of crushes mm -hmm. it. So I'm inclined to agree with you. Like dual attacks are just so, so strong uh in this game. 
not consistent enough for PvP for some people, but uh, for PvE, I agree. It's the it's the truth. Like that's probably the winning strategy. So yeah. Uh, yeah. As for I like, mean, go ahead. Other than that, you know, gear is the lifeblood of Epic Seven, right? You 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 build a Banshee team, you build a Wyvern team, and there's tons of options for those, right? You uh, you look up guides, you check on Reddit, you just Google my first Wyvern team, and you will find thousands of things about it. Um, you pick one and you build it, and then you run it, and that gets you the gears to improve it. This this was a hard learn for me coming yeah. from Brave Exvius, because Brave Exvius was a unit-driven game, right? Yeah. The gear was kind of generic. It was the units that made the difference. And Epic Seven is a polar opposite to, to, to what a lot of games are, right? The uh, Epic Seven's a game of team building and team synergy, not just units, right? And it, yeah. that's doubly so for PvE over RTA. It's all about building teams that synergize together and a lot of times those teams have multiple unit options, but the gear doesn't. Um, you'll need a tanky unit, you'll need a damage dealer, you'll need a weaver, and they probably are all going to share the same gear. It's just you're going to want ones that have specific skills or specific elements, but I don't know. I, I've seen people like wail in this game when they join, and they get darn near every unit in the game, and, and they just sit there in disbelief when they can't accomplish even easy tasks because they didn't bother building the units that can get them the gear to make the units usable. You yes. could have every ML5 in the game, and if, if you don't have the unit, the gear to back it up, yeah, it's, it's all pointless. Anywhere. Yeah, it's the reason why I have the new player equipment guide, even though it's like mm -hmm. 40 minutes long, and I have people come to me and say like, it's a lot to ask me to watch 40 minutes, and I understand that, but like, in that, if you... Dedicate the forty minutes to watching that. You will yeah. know People everything. People ask me all the time. Do you, do you should I pull this unit? It's like, do you have the gear to make that unit? Well, I don't know. It's like, we'll find somebody of the same zodiac and class and see if you have enough leftover gear to make that unit. It's like, no, I, I can't even come close to making that unit. Then the, you don't pull that unit. Then you don't pull that unit exactly. <laughs> yeah. What's it, you pull? I mean, unless you're just pulling it for collection because you like the look, you want it in your lobby and stuff. But you you know, why are you gonna pull a unit you could never play? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Grind the gear first. You, you you can gear up your free three stars and four stars. You can stockpile your resources. A collab hits, and you can go nuts. <laughs> okay, a few exceptions to that. There's there's future investments, but yeah, you uh, a lot right. of people mistake units over gear. All right, so you, speaking of units to pull, because we have to at least talk about the elephant in the room, which is Rift uh, and Kane. <laughs> Thoughts on Rift as a mode very quickly as well as K as Kane. What are your overall impressions of Kane from where he where he started from to where he is now? I'm disappointed that Rift isn't Wyvern Fort or Hunt 14. It's close. It's like maybe Hunt 13 and a half. Yeah. But uh I also acknowledge the fact that Smog 8 has never released a PvE mode that they haven't touched up later. Right, yeah, auto this tower is, came out true. completely changed. AI came out completely changed. Hollow trials, hollow trials was originally something you just farm for charms. Now it's a completely different system. Expeditions completely changed. This will get changed too. Um, okay, maybe mid season, maybe next season. It's hard to say, but I think it will get better. Um, it's uh, for people that haven't looked it up. It's uh, if if you can one shot it, it's better than hunts like across the board, even during buff events. If you can two-shot it, buff events are better, like measurably better. Mm -hmm. And if you can three-shot it... Just stick even, with Hunt 13. You know, just, just stick with Hunts, really. There, there, there's no reason to do it. And, and I've been telling people that uh, Rift is kind of like the Emperor RTA, but, but for PvE, yeah. right? It, it's really for just the top one percenters. To give them something that's a little different to do, a little challenging, slightly different way to get gain gear, and that uh, if you can't do it, or if you can do it, but it takes a lot, like it takes you three or four tries, and maybe you'll get it down to two tries, but you're going to spend 30,000 stamina getting there. Is the squeeze worth the juice at that point? I mean, it's okay mm. to say, I, it's just not worth the grind for me to get to Emperor this season. It's completely fine to say, it's just not worth the effort and time and grind to get into Rift this season, I'm going to continue to farm, farm hunts, and maybe next season I will be ready. Maybe next season it'll be more worth farming, because the difference yeah. is marginal. I'm not kidding when I say it's like Wyvern 13 and a half. It's 
marginal difference. Marginal difference, yeah. That's I'm cool, sure though. the comment section will go nuts with that, arguing one side and down the other. And <laughs> yeah, it, it's very subjective. Are you looking at just gold? Are you looking at just gear? Are you considering all the other aspects? Yeah, it's a game of resource management. So you do you. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually like that uh, that like uh, like that analogy that it's like something to aspire to because like we haven't really had something like that in a really long time in PVE. Is it's all we been had something it was it was the old auto tower and people lost their minds over it <laughs> yeah i because i remember i got to the last last level on the original auto tower and i was like dude this is way too overtuned but uh what i, I don't didn't, like I, I didn't about complain rift, about it what, re- Go ahead. what really upsets me about rift is that it's presented as something doable for everybody yeah um it's hard content, but they didn't come right out and say, this is incredibly difficult content that you shouldn't try to do unless you're a you know, two-year-plus gamer or you spend. And, and that's the truth of it. If you don't have two years' worth of assets or you spend on the game, you probably are not geared to handle Rift. And there's no shame in that. You're just not freaking two to four years into the game it takes time to get to the top level it's like it's like saying oh you can't get to emperor man that's gotta suck <laughs> it's like wow i just started two months ago <laughs> you know yeah but they present it they present it as this pve content that makes it look like it's for everybody they make it exceedingly difficult they punish mid-game t- players for trying because if you fail too much you just lose your stamina first time ever we've had that where if you fail you're punished for trying you just lose whatever stamina you spent into it so far you fail that third time gone there goes your 40 60 80 100 stamina on that third fail and that's not cool and then they then they throw up a banner here's a unit that's specifically for rift they show video footage of him which i can only guess is at rc21 because kane is absolutely murdering in that and players go wow here we go this content i couldn't do before this this is the breeg of rift right this is going to let me do the content and then they pull for this unit and spend real money in-game money whatever they get this unit and then they're still in the crapper because this unit all all Kane does is get you killed if you try to use them before RC8. Mm. And even after RC8, there's better options. But you put him on a team pre-RC8, you're going to struggle. Because <laughs> he procs uh, yeah. so many counterattacks, you just get wiped. Yeah. I, I don't like him pre-RC8. I, I, I don't yeah, do Bia- any, was telling me to stay away. Yeah, Bianco was like, hey, stay away from him until you get to 8. Because yep. like, I'm, I'm behind at this point. I, I was in the camp of... I think Kane is going to be the salvation for me. Like he's going to be what lets me do rift. And I waited until he came out. And then like, so I'm, I'm only on like RC, like four or something right now mm-hmm. or five. So yeah, uh, I'll, and, I'll be curious to see what he does at eight. Yeah. And you, you, that's another thing too, is then they pull this unit and then they realize they can't do it. So now they've spent all this money on a unit who, who looks really cool in the lobby. I love him slamming his mug around and he's got one of the best, uh, uh, husbando, uh, profile avatars he looks yeah. great in, in the frame um but that's just it right he can't be used in any other content literally he, he sucks at vera he, he he might have some minor uses in ai but do we really need more warriors for ai no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> um, right anybody that says he's good in rta is 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 i want some of what they're smoking <laughs> yeah that, that's yeah that's definitely he's not a, he's not a good unit and he's on a timer right season ends what good is he he d- is d- unless they change his kit, unless they rework him, unless they buff him, which they probably won't. I, I don't like seasonal characters that are on a four to six month long season. You yeah. know, at the end of the season, that's why I recommended everybody's grace of growth on him. Don't put Mola into somebody who's useless six months from now or just as useful as haste. Right. And, yeah. um, and, and people who miss this banner who regret it and they, they, they say, you know what, now I've got the gear and I want to get into Rift, I'll just do the story summon to get Kane. They can't. It's a six-month ter- cooldown on the story. So you can't create uh, oh, you can't, oh, you can't the even season's get, over. You can't get until after the Fire Rift is over. Wow, I didn't even... Yeah, until didn't. Fire Rift comes back, which if they do this every four months... Oh, man. Is, is what, a year? A if year. they only do RGB, so it's a year? Yeah. If they do MLs, it's a year and a half? Yeah, see, and I they said I, four to six months. It could easily be two years before we see Fire Rift again. I, I don't like it. I think it was a, it, at best, it was mishandled. At worst, it's it's predatory. Mm. And uh, no, yeah, I, I, I I feel on that. So when I about that, 
Yeah, when I it's one of the complaints that I had when I was doing design work with the the last company I was with for designing cards because they would design things that are just standalone. Just um, water. Yeah, just what? Yeah, it's just standalone yeah. um, cards where it's just like we want this to be the thing, and it does one oddly specific thing and one specific archetype. And I would always like question why can't it just be more generically. Uh, like open, why can't the design be more accessible and allow players more freedom to use the thing uh, in other ways? That's kind of where I'm at with Kane is like Kane is designed for Rift and nothing else when I really think that they should be designing characters that are just broadly applicable to all game modes. And if it just happens to coincide with what you want, uh, like your new game mode, then that's great. Like they really should have designed this character so that he's good in Rift, but also viable elsewhere. Because I think, honestly, more characters need to be like that than just the ML5s and the Limiteds in this game. Like, every right. RGB5 that comes out, you know, there's a Brig in there sometimes for, like, you know, how great they are at PvE. But there's a lot of, um, like, if you just look at Episode th uh, 4 on the whole, it's like, for every Lua and Pero we, we get, there's, like, at least, like, a dozen other duds. They just don't really do a lot because they're just designed for one specific thing. And if you don't need that thing, then they're just a bench warmer. And that's that I think that that kind of hurts the uh, Epic Seven a little bit in the long run is that we just have a huge roster of just like way too narrow, way too niche characters when they really should just be trying to make, you know, interesting and broadly applicable designs, at least in my opinion. I mean, you said it right. This isn't the first time they've done it. it. It they did this with Brieg, right? Yeah. Expedition's a problem. Here's a character to make expeditions easier. But they they hit a home run with Brieg. He is he's functional in things outside of expedition. He's functional multi expeditions. The seasons on Expos is faster. He's great in the Carcanus fight in um in Nightmare Raid, like freaking awesome there. Mm. Replaces Ran or Lua easily. Uh, I've even seen like some a lot of sub champ usage in RTA where he he's done really well. And I, I haven't seen much of him post champ, but I've seen people you know make gains with him. Yeah, that... he's usable outside of his his main court. Now now the question is, was that the plan with Kane, and they, it was a swing and a miss, or was Brieg intended to be just like Kane and only usable in Expo, and we found ways to use him elsewhere? I, I'm not sure, but Kane is way way better at expo than Brieg is at uh, or than sorry Brieg is way way better yeah, at expo than, than Kane, Kane is, is at rift. rift yeah no i got what you're saying there it's just it, it's unfortunate <laughs> like I, I think like i said it's a little bit too narrow in what he does like i i drew a lot of comparisons to sermia in my initial impressions of him because similar stat line and he just seems to be a character that's just designed to get extra attacks on the S1 for PvE content. That's kind of his gimmick, and I wish he was more than just that. Yeah. I mean, you asked me what my uh, my impression of Kane was at, at release, and, and now he's... Uh, my, my impression at release was that he's a bad, useless unit. And, and my impression now is that he's a bad, slightly more useful unit. Hmm. Because there, there's a lot wrong with Kane, I, 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 I'll try, I'll try, I'll try to wrap this up quick because I get very passionate and upset when I'm talking about Kane. Right, <laughs> the biggest issue with Kane, he only works for Rift, which is content that's designed for less than ten percent of the community. I mean, intentional or not, that's that's very suspicious behavior that comes off as of scummy. Re -re Releasing new difficult content that targets 10% of the community and then throwing a unit at it and then you find out that unit's only about a half step better than other units in the game it's it's bad i don't like it, it he, he's not even really that good in rift until you hit rc15 at rc15 he's fantastic he's definitely best in slot but other units can still accomplish all the goals yeah. And he's on a timer. It's a terrible, terrible practice to release a unit that's on a timer. I mean, Rift ends in four to six months, and then Kane becomes just as useless as Haste. I don't, I'm not a fan of making seasonal units when seasons are so damn long, and the unit and will have also well the over a year downtime. Don't forget the investment costs. Basically, what Tristan's trying to say, Smoggy, oh, yeah. is uh, 
buff this man in four months, <laughs> please. <laughs> Make him more broadly uh, usable. Uh, make some changes to the kit for for sure. Um, yeah, people people say, oh well, RC fifteen. That's not that far. That's halfway. To, you know, that's that's not that bad. RC fifteen is eleven thousand stamina. If you don't have the pet and the pet never procs, that's RC 15, 11,100 and change stamina. If you don't get pet procs, if you do get pet procs on the average that they proc at a max affinity S rate skill, it's still about 9,500 stamina just to get to RC 15 where your new unit lot. becomes usable. That is RC 20, lot. RC 21 is 32,000 stamina. That's over 400 leafs. Yikes! <laughs> Over mm -hmm. four hundred mm -hmm. leaves. I didn't realize it was that much. I was like, "Oh, when you it's were saying crazy. when you were saying ninety five hundred, I was like, what's that like? A week we and a half, two weeks the, uh... of natural stamina, maybe if you do all yeah. the web banners and the ads and everything." Oh, and that's that's if you're two shotting by RC eight and one shotting by RC fifteen. By the way, those numbers go up considerably if you're oh, man. not clearing as fast. So it's yeah, it's um, it, it's it's a lot. Okay. So to jump off of Rift, I guess is to do we'll do uh, a one last question, I guess, before we wrap it up to 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 move away from doom and gloom. So what <laughs> is your dream PVE content for this game? Because when I first came into it, when we got Hell Raid, like just the raid system in general, I used mm -hmm. to come from my first gotcha game was Puzzle and Dragons, and my favorite thing in that game was the co-op feature where. You would go in and you bring your party and after your turn was over, it would, you know, swap to the other side with your friend and the two of you are basically tag teaming a boss like you would in, uh, in Labyrinth. And I was like, oh man, I hope they do co-op for this. It'd be like the sweetest thing ever. I wasn't even thinking about PVE at that time. So for me, my dream content was always like co-op Labyrinth. Like not, mm -hmm. like, I guess we kind of have that now with Ancient Inheritance, but like, it's not the same where I wanted to have us go in at the same time and have to take turns strategically one after another to make it happen. I thought that would right. have been so cool. But uh Yeah. I, I I'm right there with you. I would like to see more interactive co op. I mean, right now AI is really all we got. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you want to consider RTA co op, right? <laughs> <laughs> it kinda is. <laughs> A little I mean, bit. It, 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 AI is great. It's fun to see each other moving around the maps. It, it'd be great if we had something that was short. You know, maybe monthly or even weekly, but a way to team up with uh like, like, what if you could team up with another player to do auto tower or, or, or maybe some like one week long form of AI that can be done in one to two days, can be totally completed in one to two days with two to five other players. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe revamp Guild Wars to be more interactive. I mean, there's this, uh, the entire guild system is so underdeveloped and underused. Uh, we have had that great achievement tab open since 2019. Maybe, maybe, maybe put something there yeah now that there, there's there's a lot of things you could say about stuff that uh has been in there for a while i, I know uh level one guardians is one that i've always had my eye on like hey <laughs> i remember we had that big push the guardian update was what they called it and we got kazaran yep that was that kazaran was got us four out of five on the achievement for summoning guardians yep <laughs> Hey, he's he's decent. He's not he's no Arky, but he's decent. Like we we like him sometimes. He sometimes he's fun to use, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, ima imagine a imagine a three v three v three brawl mode, or 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 a, or a two person versus the AI brawl mode, where you where you work with each other, or, or even where you compete against other other guilds. Brawl mode versus brawl mode. I mean, yeah, th there's. I, I don't know. I just think we need more co-op stuff it, it, like especially if like an in-game chat could pop up during it right now discord servers are the lifeblood of player interaction so yeah it'd be nice if we had more fun things to collaborate on and do together i'm not trying to turn epic 7 into an mmo by any stretch i'm just saying things to strengthen the community because let's be real it's like 99 percent of why we're still here is the community yes i 100 percent agree and like the sentiment that I see on social media from people outside of our community is like, oh, you mean that PvP game? And I'm like, <laughs> ugh, because like some of the PvP we or PvE we have is really good, I feel like, in this game. I just I wish we had more of it. Cause like the the general strategy seems to be to the, the game is all about RTA in a lot of the unit releases when you and I know, like looking at the data, like 
only like 10% of the player base is really RTA hungry. The vast majority of Epic Seven's players are PvE players. And we have a reputation of not having enough PvE. So, like, I think that's something we, we, we should look at uh, going into the well, future. I'm a big fan of RTA, right? It, it's incredibly... Vi- it's the most visible part of our... Uh... Yeah. Part of our game. You you jump onto Twitch, you fire you search Epic Seven, ninety nine percent of the streams are gonna be RTA. And the others are probably people gearing for RTA. And that's fine. It, it's it's fun to watch, it's fun to play, it's very visible, but I mean you're right. You look at the number of people that participated in RTA last season, it's not even on par with the number of people who downloaded the game in one month. Yep. Yep, that's the takeaway. That's what I'm I'm trying to get at here. Okay, so any any last words just before we we wrap it up on this uh this longer <laughs> uh, Sue talk this time around? I told you I'd talk your ear off if you want to talk about <laughs> PVE, but yeah, I, I I enjoyed it, man. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, make sure you like and subscribe and watch. Uh, and then once once you're done liking and subscribing with my videos and ringing that bell, then maybe you go over and do the same for Sue. Yeah, because this guy's got some of the most important content in Epic Seven. I, I've said it before: deep dives on units, most underrated content creator in Epic Seven. Go check his stuff out. Uh, I appreciate the the kind words. And again, for those of you who've been living under a rock that are here from my channel, please, please, you owe it to yourself to subscribe to Tristan Wolf and watch his amazing content. He is the unsung hero, I think, of the Epic Seven community. Thank you so much, Tristan. I appreciate having you here. Until next time, guys, let me know down in the comments below. Who else should we get on here? What should we talk about? All those wonderful things. If you have anything you want to hear from on Tristan, I can hopefully get back to you on that in a comment or things like that. All that wonderful stuff. Let me know down in the comments below. So that's going to be it for this one. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.